Good afternoon, everyone. I am French. No mystery about this for anyone who can hear well. And as a French person, I enjoy French social dinners. My friends know that I work in artificial intelligence, AI. And now, every dinner turns into an inevitable sequence. Sylvain, do you realize that with your AI things, you're taking people's jobs away and creating mass unemployment? Sylvain, do you know that by pushing AI, you're pushing all of us into total surveillance and dystopia? Sylvain, did it ever occur to you that one day robots and AI will take over us and maybe mankind will extinguish? Sometimes I think to myself, am I that person? And I'm pretty sure my colleagues working in AI and people working in AI around the world have the same question. From day one, AI didn't do too good with public relations. It started with Marvin Minsky, father of AI, a professor at MIT, and his baby, HAL 9000, in 201 Space Odyssey. HAL became famous for being a soft voice AI engine, sounding a bit like Alexa, maybe, turning into a psychopath killer. And what did we see since on TV or at movies? The Terminator, Blade Runner, The Matrix, Black Mirror, Westworld, everything needed to turn all of us and convince us that, yes, AI could be the end of mankind. And what do tech gurus say about that? Elon Musk, Peter Thiel keep on warning us about the dangers of AI-powered robots or AI surveillance becoming a totalitarian technology. Are we on the verge of this, of AI Mageddon? Will AI anytime soon crush our planet and mankind all together? In the fields of Armageddon, the Bible is depicting the final battle between mankind and the forces of evil. Will AI and robots be those forces of evil? I don't think so. Of course, AI experts have diverging views of whether one day general AI will take over mankind. But as an AI practitioner, I can tell you this will not happen anytime soon. Our AI engines are powered by growing numbers of data correlations. We are nowhere near any human cognitive pattern, any self-awareness, any conscience desire. AI is having its success, of course, but there are basic, thing, basic things that AI cannot do and that humans can do. Take, for instance, the latest book from uh, Gary Marcus and Ernest Davis from MIT, where they explain how they desperately search for demos of robots who could just open a wide range or do of doorknobs, and they could not find any. Rather than being on the verge of AI Mageddon, I think we are on the verge of this. A goat. Just a goat, a famous one. One which has been charged with the evils, impurity, sins, violence of a community to be sent to die in the desert. Anthropologists have established that this goat, the scapegoat depicted in the Bible, is in fact a, uni a universal concept. When tension or violence arise in a community, a goat is being sacrificed to restore peace, or maybe another kind of animal, or maybe in the past, a human being, or 
a minority. And in this case, a technology. I am convinced that there is a high risk that AI becomes a new scapegoat today. Listen to our political leaders mounting discontent about mass unemployment. Clearly, the thought of robots and this AI inside them. Of course, as we all know, there was never ever any mass unemployment before AI. Or take the growing fear on population surveillance, control society, especially since COVID. Clearly, 100% because of AI. Yeah, of course. There was never any totalitarian regime before AI was invented. Or take opinion manipulation. Ah, this time, clearly, 100% the fault of those social medias and algos running onto them. Yeah, there's never been any kind of propaganda before machine learning. I know I'm exaggerating a little bit. But the anti-AI narratives are leading to this. And this is leading to the EU building a regulation on AI. And the early draft of that regulation mentioned high-risk systems who could cause physical and psychological harm to people using subliminal techniques. Of course, regulating AI makes sense, but the tone is just amplifying the public's concerns for AI. And public concern for AI matters. Because the dangers of AI are far smaller than the danger of not having AI. It's tricky, I know. So let's start with the dangers of AI. They exist. And three years ago, I was on a TED stage like this, alerting about what I called algocracy, taking humans out of the decision loop. And I made a plea to the tech and AI community to make sure they deploy human-centered AI. We made real progress there. A recent survey shows that 98% of large corporations have started to deploy responsible AI policies to tackle ethical issues, avoiding racist algos, for instance, to deal with privacy concerns, with the challenge of making AI explainable and more transparent. So yes, the dangers of AI can be managed. What about the danger of not having AI. I think it's massive, because AI is our only chance to solve some of our biggest problems. And I will share with you some of the work some AI teams I know or I work with do around the world. Climate crisis. Every corporation is now claiming it will reduce its CO2 emission. Very good, we like it. Reality, in a recent large-scale survey, companies report themselves that their average margin of error when they measure CO2 emission is 30 to 40%. 30 to 40%. And AI is the only solve here. Recently, some AI teams developed models who can very accurately assess the CO2 footprint of every product, customer, supplier, paving the way for real action on climate crisis. Take global health. You know every biotech or biopharma company is now using AI to accelerate drug discovery to personalize drug formulation for some patients, to optimize treatments. But on top of that, AI is being used to improve the health of most vulnerable groups. A European NGO has been investing to develop a tool to identify early signs of malnutrition for children using 
just an iPhone camera. A global NGO is fighting hard to reduce HIV transmission in Africa. And they use AI to identify which patients need special intervention, special support to make sure they stick with their treatment. Global education. We all know the solution. Just make sure that every child which is attending school will receive a few hours of personal coaching every day. Easy. But even the richest countries cannot afford it. The wealthiest household can, however, creating massive inequalities. Some teams are building AI systems who can be effective, personalized, and affordable coaches for children to help them learn how to count, how to read, how to write. Global food. Several teams around the world in AI are working so hard today to deploy with drones new farming practices, to increase agricult agricultural yields, to reduce the drain on natural resources, and even to make sure that more carbon is sequestrated in the soil. Climate crisis, global health, global education, global food. AI can help on our toughest challenges. And this is why the danger of not having AI is much greater than the dangers of AI. And we need to win the PR battle against the prophets of AI Mageddon. We need to take AI out of the dark spot. No, it is not true that the best data scientists in the world just work hard to maximize the number of clicks on a banner, as a former Facebook employee said some time ago. Many AI teams around the world are delivering spectacular results. They need to say it, and to say it loud. To conclude, I will share my secret weapon. The weapon I use when I'm under attack during the French social dinners, accused of creating mass unemployment and surveillance society. This weapon is a survey with MIT. 2,000 corporate executives around the world have been interviewed. And those who had deployed AI in their teams were asked, what did you see happen? Did they see AI Mageddon? No, they just saw this. Better team morale and collaboration for 80% of them. And it's not a surprise. AI helps improve performance, reduces the amount of tedious tasks people have to do, frees up time for people to engage and work together. So much for AI Mageddon. All together, let us make sure that we make the goat of AI truly the greatest of all times. Thank you. <laughs>